but I think what the root of this problem is coming from, and I got firsthand knowledge with this, I, I know a couple people that are involved with congregations that, 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 that are all black and part of the black church. And there's been an assault on their membership by Hebrew Israelites coming in there and, and knocking them off. And I looked up the statistics and the statistics are crazy. The statistics are like 1.8 million have been conformed over or identify as Hebrew Israelites. That's probably like four or five percent of the whole black population in the United States. And a lot of you guys is on the down low with it. There's a lot of Christian rappers that are on the down low with this thing. Man, what are we doing, bro? I'm here on the front lines. You guys got the right one, Jack. I've been under all those false teachers, man. And, and, and what it does is it puts the it puts the attention on you and takes it off the ultimate attention of Jesus Christ. Jesus. He wants us to look up, man. He wants us to look up. He wants relationship. He don't care about what color your skin is. So y'all comment, all you uh, Hebrew Israelite. All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahal. You're from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostle, the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. All right, this is Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And the reason the dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and in half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and in half, the spirit of life from Yahweh by Shemiahushah entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. All right, and this lesson is based on the video you saw at the beginning of this lesson, as well as many other examples that we have had in these last days of other nations, all right, and even Israelite Israelites themselves all right coming against their own heritage and you know uh it always takes me back to this precept all right Revelation the 11th chapter because this is how people translate and react to prophecy all right they don't want to deal with it and when they deal with the reality that's possibly true they become obsessed with proving that it isn't and that's the time that we're in all right one thing that I did notice, all right, is guys like this guy, Vocab Malones, all of these guys, with all of this prophecy going on in the earth right now, the only concern they have is still the Israelites. If they believed they actually had the gospel, if they believed all of these different things, they would not be obsessed with a belief of faith that to them is absurd. And that in itself shows you that these are the scoffers that were discussed in Second Peter's. All right, this is Second Peter's three and three, and it reads, "Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation.'" All right, you have levels to scoffing. You have people who scoff that, you know, the Lord is coming back. All right, you have people that scoff that, you know, the Lord doesn't exist. And then you have people, all right, a very uh, unique group of people who are obsessed with proving that Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are not the Israelites. When you look at their history, they've never had a history of caring about you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians until you call yourselves Israelites. All right, a lot of these scoffers, the vocab Malones of the world, prior to being the Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew Israelites coming on the scene, all right, he wasn't involved with Negro, Latino, and Native Americans and, and being obsessed with who we were as a nation of people. 
It is only now that he has this obsession, even in the midst of prophecy. All right. And did you hear this guy right here on this video? All right. He said what? He said that 1.8 million, 1.6 or 1.8 million people. All right. Negro, Latinos and Native Americans recognize themselves to be Israelites. Then he talked about the secret Israelites, the secret disciples. And these these scoffers are completely obsessed with this, man. All right. Because that's how fear is being translated through their actions. All right. It's not literal shivering and, and looking looking crazy and praying for mercy. It's literally first trying to laugh it off and then becoming obsessed. Obsessed with proving that you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans are not the Israelites. And it shows you that the prophecies are true, man. All right. Matter of fact, let's get this. This is Hosea 1 and 10. And it reads... Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. All right. And that's prophecy. Our nation coming back to its heritage is prophecy. In a place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. Where did that happen to any other nation? That also coincides with the curses in Deuteronomy 28th chapter. If everybody can receive of the covenant, then why does the scriptures talk about Yahweh Shai coming back to redeem them who were under the curse of the law, man? But it is because of their fear. Great fear fell upon them. When you were just calling yourselves Negroes, Latino, and Native Americans, they rejoiced over you. Like it says in Revelation the 11th chapter, they sent gifts one to another. They let you come to their churches, you know, just to, just to diversify their congregation. But the moment you started saying that the book was about you, that's when it became a problem. Our dead bodies lied in the streets of this great city for many centuries. And nobody suffered to put us in graves. And now that the Lord has quickened the remnant of his people who are coming back to him, they are suffering to put you in graves. Which is to take you back to that nationality of just being black. Because it allows them to mask who they are and the family that they come from. And the fact that the Lord has judgments concerning nations of people. All right. As a matter of fact, this is something they could never debunk. All right. This is Ezekiel 39. And I'm going to jump down to verse. I'm going to jump down to verse 21. All right. And it reads, and I will set my glory among the heathen and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord, their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they have trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanliness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore thus saith Yehoshua Shem Shai, Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies land and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. How was that being done? How, how was that going to be accomplished? If the narrative that they say in this day and age with this New Testament is that it's just about believers and non-believers, why wouldn't the Lord expressly say that? When you go into Matthew, the 25th chapter, all right, even Yahweh Shai, the son of the son of man, all right, the one they ignorantly called Jesus, said he's coming to separate nations. He didn't say he was coming to separate believers from non-believers. All right, continuing on. It says, then shall they know that I am the Lord, their God, 
which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith Yahweh Shemiahushai. And it's very plain, all right? These scriptures are very plain, all right? Here it is. They didn't suffer you to, to be put in graves when you were just black, when you were just uh, Hispanic. They treated you like a charity case. But now you're saying you're the people of the book, all right? Now it's scary. Now it's scary for them because now the idea of them actually having to pay for what they've done to the nation that they despise is a horrifying idea. And that's why they're completely obsessed in the midst of these man, these vaccination uh, agendas. All right. In the midst of this RFID microchip agenda. All right. In the midst of World War Three. All right. In the midst of all of these abominations that are going on all across the planet, but specifically in uh, what they call America, which is Babylon the Great. Their sole focus. These so-called Christians, their sole focus is convincing Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that they are not the Israelites. That don't sound fishy. That, that don't sound odd. I mean, actions speak louder than words. If I had somebody that didn't believe, all right, that did. Matter of fact, let's grab this. Romans 3 and 3. All right, and it reads, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of Yahweh Shah without effect? Yahweh Bashimel shall forbid, yet let Yahweh Bashimel shall be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. All right? And these words reign true. The Lord's counsel shall stand. All right? And that's why the scriptures talk about the heathen knowing that the children of Israel went into captivity. All right? Over and over through these prophecies, these future prophecies, the Lord discusses delivering the children of Israel out of captivity. Bringing back the house of Judah, all right, and the house of Israel out of their captivities and making them one house. All throughout the scriptures. And the actions speak louder than words, all right? The fact that they are so obsessed that they are uh, relentless, diligent even, and doing videos trying to convince you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans to uh, not uphold your heritage as Israelites says a lot about this truth. It says a lot about this truth. Man, this is, matter of fact, let's get this. All right, let's get uh, Wisdom of Solomon 5. Because we don't, we don't like, we not, we not obsessed with these other people who have these other absurd beliefs. All right, we, we deal with it. We combat, we combat them with the scriptures, but then we move back on the prophecy. And for so-called Christians to not even be, not even be diligent in, in making videos concerning prophecy and current events, as much as they are in trying to convince a nation that they believe has nothing to do with the uh, with the chosen people, that they're not the chosen people. That's like chasing around people who believe in Santa Claus and making a video, three videos, five videos, six videos a week. On people who believe in Santa Claus If it's so absurd to you Why would you even bother And that in itself Gives testament that this is the truth man Alright this is wisdom of Solomon Chapter 5 and verse 1 And it reads then shall the righteous man stand In great boldness before the face Of such as have afflicted him And made no account of his labors When they see it they shall be troubled With terrible fear and shall be amazed At the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. All right. And they are troubled with terrible fear, man. And that fear keeps them diligent in trying to convince themselves. All right. That this isn't the truth. Because they're not really convincing anybody. All right. None of, the, none of these videos that these scoffers do, these so-called Christian scoffers, none of the videos that they do really deter uh, the, the believers of Yahweh Shai from returning. Because it's according to prophecy. You couldn't stop it if you wanted to. That's why Romans 3 and 3 says, so what if some do not believe? Does it make their, f no, without effect? Does it make the, the will of Yahweh Shemel Shah without effect? No, just because you don't want it to be so, it is so. That's why the Lord said this, man. 
All right, let me grab it. All right, this is Zephaniah 2 and 1. All right, and it reads, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. And you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians are not desired as a nation of people, even in these religious sects, all right? The Christian community, the Muslim community, for you Islamic uh, jakes, you're not desired. The only time that they have anything to say to you is when they're trying to convince you that you're not greater than you truly are through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Let's go to this. Let's get Yahweh Shai. All right. This is Matthew chapter 25. And I'm going to jump down to verse 31. All right. And it reads, when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And it says he's going to separate nations, all right? He's not going to separate believers from non-believers. He's separating nations. That's what it means when, he's, when he said he came to bring division. He's separating nations. And even within the nation of Israel, there's a separation. There's the Israel of Yahweh Shem Yahushai. That's why it talks about them not being all Israel, which are of Israel. All right, because though you have Israelites who are naturally by bloodline Israelites, they carry themselves in a Gentile state of mind. They completely rebel against the Heavenly Father and the heritage that was given to their fathers. So, yes, are they Israelites by nature? Yes. But in spirit, they're not. And that is the separation. That is another part of the division. But make no mistake, you're not going to jump over the house of Israel and be joint heirs in a covenant that was never given to you in the first place. And that thought scares these so-called Christians because they see the precepts that we bring out. And they know they have no rebuttal against it. That's why they stick close to the New Testament and they never go into prophecy. Even now. The re revelations is a part of, of prophecy and they won't go into that to save their life. They won't speak on what the mark of the beast is. When they do, they're freestyling. It's wild out Wednesday. Off the top of the dome. But when it comes to you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans being the nation of Yasha Allah, then it becomes a problem, man. All right. And make no mistake, this is about you. How is Shai? All right. That is the king of kings. That is the Lord of lords. That is Shiloh. All right, that is Emmanuel. This kingdom belongs to him. And under that, the nation of Yasha Allah as joint heirs, but it is his kingdom. And most, uh, I won't even say most, we believe, all right, the brothers at Great Millstone, all right, and other like-minded brothers, all right, that the Lord is going to bring about this kingdom, all right, and the nation of Yahshua Allah is going to be joint heirs, as the scriptures read, as the scriptures say it. But make no mistake, other nations are not involved in that covenant. They're not involved with being joint heirs, all right? This is Romans 9 and 1. All right, and it reads, I say the truth in Hamashiach, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Hamashiach. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh Shai and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Hamashiach came, who is over all Yahweh Shai blessed forever a month. And that's plain, man. That is very plain. And through the spirit and poverty, how about Shemel Shah, what we're witnessing is prophecy on all fronts, all sides of the game, all sides of the chessboard. We're seeing prophecy being uh, performed, all right, being exercised in living color. 
And these scoffers are a huge part of that puzzle. You know, as it's, uh, as the scriptures read, in the last days there shall come scoffers. All right? Because they suffered us to, to be dead forever. They suffered us to be a nation void of counsel forever. All right? Oh, you know what? It reminds me. This is uh, Jeremiah 33 and 23. All right, and it reads, Moreover, the word of the Haobashim Shai came to Jeremiah, saying, Consider us not... What this people have spoken, saying the two families which the Lord hath chosen, he hath even cast them off. Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Shai, If my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. And what we have, all right, is a lot of nations, all right, a lot of heathens, all right, who have held on to the scriptures for a point in time. And now they believe that the Lord will never have mercy on his people. But instead, everyone else can be joined unto a blessing that they had to suffer for. All right. And the Lord is not unrighteous. All right. It says uh, the Lord changes not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob. All right, are not consumed. All right, and that's what that's what's happening. All right, we're in a time of prophecy, and as the scripture said, great fear will fall upon them that saw it. Great fear will fall upon the nations when they realize that we begin to stand on our feet through the spirit and power of Yahweh All right, great fear will fall on them when they found out that Hamashiach, all right, came for the sake of the nation of Yasha Allah, and that nation happens to be the nation that they despise the most. All right. So, Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rokakodash. The bonds to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.